Hey there, you looking kind of cute. Please consider subscribing and check out our Patreon for more. Enjoy the video. I'm getting ready to go shopping, and I know where my wife will take me. She had set up the meeting at a bridal shop two weeks before. After taking me shopping for bridesmaids' dresses, she thought it would be a good to embarrass me to have to go through the process of being a bride so I could fully understand what women go through. I'm wearing a shift dress with a V-neck and black and white checks. It has no sleeves and buttons down the front. Underneath, I'm wearing a very feminine white long-sleeved blouse with a big collar, white stocks held up by a white garter belt and a lot of lace, and white pumps with two-inch heels. I was wearing three pearl earrings in each ear, a pearl necklace that went with them, and pink polish on my acrylic nails. I look very girly, and I can't believe how trapped I am in this outfit. My wife has so much power over me. She really has me under her thumb. When I look in the mirror, I see that I'm no longer a husband or a man. Instead, I'm a girlfriend and a woman. As we walk across the parking lot to the car, I hear the familiar sound of my heels clicking. I realize that after three years of becoming a woman, I now move around a lot, like a model walking down a runway. It is terrible. We are driving toward Holly's salon instead of the bridal shop, which is starting to worry me. It's not Tuesday or Friday, which is when I usually get my hair cut. That's when I feel like myself, or I get my nails done or get a wax. As we pull into Holly's parking lot, my wife says, I've decided to do something to your hair. Holly is waiting for you inside. I talked to her this morning. When I walk into the salon, all the other women say, Hi, Josie. When I walk in, Holly is sitting on the couch and says, We have a surprise for you, sweetie. As Holly leads me to the back chairs, I pass one of the stylists, Amy, who says, I love that outfit, honey. It's very cute. I say thank you and tell her I like her shoes. As I move around all the other customers and stylists, I feel very self-conscious. The salon is full, and there are only women there. Holly asks one of the stylists, where did you put that white lightning I mixed for Josie? Now, she sits me down, covers me with a pink apron, shampoos my hair, and then starts to brush this white paste on my hair without telling me anything. I don't even get an explanation. I know I shouldn't say anything because if I do, she'll tell my wife that I did something wrong and I'll get in more trouble. After my whole head is covered and it smells so strong that it hurts my eyes, I am put under the dryer and put in a plastic cap. As it cooks, Holly would walk by every few minutes to see how it was going. She starts to laugh and tell me, not yet, honey, just a little longer. I'm sitting next to another woman under the dryer. Her hair is covered with a plastic cap, and she says to me, I hope my husband appreciates what I do to look good for him, considering what we have to go through. Does your husband know how much you suffer for him? I try to smile and tell her that I hope so, but I can tell that she thinks I'm another woman. And she should, because when I look at my shaved, white-stockinged legs and heels, I realize I don't look at all like a man. So I talk to her in a squeaky voice about guys, clothes, and other girl things. I don't have much of a choice. Holly finally pulls me out from under the dryer and washes the paste out of my hair. Then she adds a second liquid and rubs it all over. This is a toner, and it stays on for about five minutes. And then you can curl and set your hair. When that's done, she leads me back to her chair in the front of the salon and starts to blow dry, curl, tease, and set my style. I kept my back to the mirror the whole time. When she's done, she shows me myself in the mirror. Oh my God, my hair is yellow like a banana. It is all bright yellow, and I've been turned into a blonde. I can't believe it. It's going to last forever. Then Holly says, I love it, and it really makes you look like a woman. A man would never wear this color and style. You'll get a touch-up every three weeks or so, and since you're a regular, we can easily fit that into your twice-monthly schedule. All the stylists look at me with admiration and tell me how much fun it will be to be blonde. One of the stylists, Cindy, who is also blonde, tells me, all the men will notice you, and wherever you go, people will stare at you. As I stumble out of the salon and into my wife's car, I feel dizzy. There, she is laughing so hard that she is crying, and she says to me, Get used to it, because it really makes you look like the bimbo I want.
She makes me practice my squeaky Minnie Mouse voice and laugh the whole way to the bridal shop. All the time, I can't stop looking in the passenger mirror. As we pull into the bridal parking lot, I feel really embarrassed because I'm dressed like a girl and have blonde hair. I have to pretend I'm getting married and look at all the wedding dresses. I have to try them on and show them off to all the saleswomen in the store, of course. When we walk in, the first saleswoman we met two weeks ago is there to greet us, and she has picked out a few dresses for me to try on. We walk into a big curtained room. Inside, there are mirrors all around the room and a pedestal in the middle. She goes by the name Wendy. She tells my wife that she would be happy to help me put on the different dresses, and to my horror, my wife agrees. As I unbutton my dress, I realize that I'm standing in tights, heels, and a dark blue pants. What happened, Josie? asks my wife. Did you forget you were trying on your wedding gowns today? Wendy smiles and says, It's okay. You'll still get the look you want because most of the dresses I chose won't make a difference. Then she puts the first dress over my head, zips it up, and closes a lot of buttons on the sleeves. I can't believe this is happening to me when I look in the mirror. I'm standing on this pedestal, and I'm dressed like a bride. My wife takes pictures while we try on different gowns. Some are long and have trains, others have very detailed beadwork, and others have a lot of bows. They are all very girly. I have to try each one on, walk out into the shop, and ask the other saleswomen what they think. They all tell me how cute and nice I look. I have been told to say things like, I want to look good for my boyfriend, John, and I hope he thinks I'm beautiful in this one, in my girly voice. Then headpiece after headpiece and veil after veil are put on, and with my blonde hair, I can't help but smile. I know things could get worse for me if I don't do it. I don't understand how she does it, but every time I think it can't get any worse, my wife comes up with something new. As we tell Wendy that we need to think about which dress would be best and look at the pictures, we have to do both. She fills out all the information on the dress I like and gets my phone number and address so they can keep track of me. Wendy shows me all the different stuffed animals, slippers, and other things that the shop sells. She also shows me all the different shoes and nylons that brides wear under their dresses. The whole time, people asked me when my wedding was, how many people would be there, and how many people were in the wedding party. I answer like a giddy, blonde, girly should, waving my hands and putting them to my chest and throat as I talk and playing with my blonde hair the whole time. We're leaving, and I'm glad it's finally over. We drive to a large mall where there is another bridal shop. We go in there, and of course, the whole thing happens again. This shop is a lot bigger and has a lot more saleswomen. Very busy, and a saleswoman has to help me get dressed again in the changing room. Here I am again, standing there in nylons, shaved legs, heels, in front of a woman who thinks I'm an embarrassed woman with my arms crossed over my chest while I'm put in gown after gown. People are talking about this dress or that dress, and the saleswomen are standing on this little pedestal and pulling in different parts of the dress to show me what should be taken in or let out when I come for my fitting. Finally, I'm done dressing, and we leave. I foolishly think that maybe I could go home and try to get over this. We drive to the movies, and I have to buy the tickets, popcorn, and drinks. We go into the theater, and as I walk by the crowds of people, I feel so self-conscious. Even though I know there's no way they could think anything, here comes a blonde woman. We eat at a very busy restaurant after the movie. The hostess and waitress don't even close their eyes. As soon as we sit down, the waitress comes over and asks, Hello, ladies. What do you want to drink? My wife comes up to me and says, No one here thinks you are even a little bit manly. You really are more girly than most real women here. Ha ha. Then, as we were driving, my wife reached into the back of the car and pulled out a pair of black nylons with seams. She told me to put them on in the car, takes a bag from the back seat and gives me a pair of black heels that are four inches high. Also, put these on. We pull up to the row of clubs on Delaware Avenue, and I already know what will happen tonight. I'll let you show off your new hairstyle on the dance floor tonight, Josie. When you get out, I want you to ask the valet if your seams are straight, and I want you to say it in a girly, squeaky voice. I know we'll be dancing for a long time tonight. My new life as a blonde just started. Thanks for watching. 
Be sure to check out Patreon for a lot more content and early access to YouTube videos.